Brett, you there? I am, John. Thanks for having me this morning. No problem. Thank you for coming online. Just uh, hopefully ask you a few questions here today. Um, Brett, tell us about your your first couple of weeks here kicking and all that. How's that going? Um, I'm off to a pretty good start uh, right now. I'm pretty pleased with, with how the season's opened up for me and for our team. Um started 2 and 0 um and uh we're looking for looking for some big things hopefully this year and um hopefully from a special teams perspective we can uh we can keep things things going in the right direction. Nice. Nice. Now, now how did it start for you? You know, that's a common question we like to ask our guests. How did kicking start for you? Um I started uh, when I was really young, doing the uh, the punt, pass, and kick competitions and stuff like that. Um, also played a little soccer when I was younger, so I think that helped with um, with ball skills and foot eye coordination and that kind of stuff. So um, it definitely started at a young age for me, and um, I've enjoyed doing it um, for as long as I can remember. Nice, nice. So I got to ask you, how did you end up in Nebraska? Uh, well, being a Nebraska guy, it just kind of was always a dream of mine to uh, to play for the Cornhuskers. And um, coming out of high school, I actually had um, two scholarship offers, one to uh, the University of Ohio and one to Colorado State. Um, and I just decided kind of with the coaching change and uh, Coach Polini and his staff coming in here that um, this was this was the right fit for me and I wanted to, wanted to give it a shot. Nice, nice. Yeah, I mean, that's a – Tough decision to make when you got some scholarship offers to even to walk on and, and do what you did. So that's that's a pretty mm-hmm. impressive. Um, summarize a little bit of last season. I know um, you obviously didn't kick too much, but you, you got probably I would imagine learned a lot from Alex Henry. How, summarize a little bit about last season. Uh, last season and the season before, I was Alex's holder. Um, mm-hmm. And I think even more important than that, I was just around him and uh, and Adi Kanalik, who got picked up by the uh, the Carolina Panthers to start this season. Um, right. And so uh, I think I learned learned a ton from them, just kind of uh, how to go about their business and how to uh, just kind of handle the day to day the day to day stresses and uh, being a college student athlete and performing at a high level. So I'm very grateful to to have been around guys like that, and I think that it's definitely um, helping me at this point. Nice. So, from a day in, day out basis, as a as a kicker and a punter, what's your normal pra- uh, practice routine like? Our practice routine is pretty much the same every day. We uh, we go out a little bit before practice, hit some balls, get warmed up, um, and then uh, at the beginning of practice, we have like field goal, special teams kind of thing. And then again, in the middle of the practice, we uh, we have another five or ten minute special team segment. So we get. We get two or three units covered um, every day, so I get to uh, kick for a little while and take a little break and then kick again and take a little break and um, then if i don't if I don't get enough kicks in uh, throughout throughout those periods, then um, I'll hit fifteen or twenty more balls just to make sure I feel like I'm staying sharp but um, also kicking and punting, I want to make sure that um, that my legs staying fresh too, so it's kind of a kind of a balancing act that I'm trying to do right now. And um, Alex also kicked and punted the last two years here, so I think kind of watching him and and talking to him through uh, through what he did and how to how he kept his leg fresh has kind of kind of helped me, I think, um, as far as this season has started. Nice. Yeah, you kind of answered my next question, but. In regards, I really want to get in a little more detail uh this punting versus kicking and doing both and all of that. Is there one that you were kind of leaning towards now, or you're kind of still feeling feeling them both out? Um, right now, I feel pretty good about both of them. Um, it's kind of a strange situation because when I came out of high school, um, I was – I didn't really focus a lot on punting. I punted for my high school team, but um I was more I was more a, a kicker, I would say. And then my first few years here, um I was the backup punter, so I spent a lot more time um learning punting and trying to kind of kind of perfect that. Um so then the last couple of years I was a punter and then this year I knew I had the opportunity to do both. Uh so I kind of fine-tuned kicking a little bit and tried to keep up to par with my punting. Um so I feel like uh I don't know if I have one necessarily that's stronger than the other just because of the situation that kind of played out for me, um, and I don't think that, that that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, I think the more the more things you can do, the I don't know, the more I can help my team and the more success, I hopefully, that I can have. Right, right. 
good stuff. And Brett, um, break it down for us a little bit. You going? Let's say you're, you're trotting on the field for field goal uh, coming this Saturday. What's going through your head? What what are you? What's your thought process as far as your field goal technique when you go out in the game? I think the biggest thing is just keep keep everything the same. Um, every kick you have, whether it be a extra point or a 50 yard field goal or um, whatever it may be, uh, make sure you have a routine and you stick to it. Just that way, uh, you know nothing really nothing really rattles you. You don't really care about the scenario. You're just going out there and you're trying to hit the same ball every time. And uh, you know if you do that, then the wind isn't as big a factor. You're not worried about stuff that that you can't control. You just have to go out there and uh, make sure your mindset's the same and just hit a good ball. And I mean. You've done it a thousand times, so you you know what you have to do to to make a kick. Right, right. Now uh, you mentioned it a little bit already. I mean, and I think your your first kick, your fifty yarder, was in some wind. I know Nebraska can get some weather conditions out there. Not mm-hmm. only that, but you have eighty, ninety thousand, ninety thousand fans. Either most of the time cheering for you, but it's a lot of pressure. Is that something? you cherish or like you you really like that or is that something that you just kind of try to block out um i try to block it out as much as i can but i I think it's natural to uh to notice it a little bit and i think that um the more you can use that to your advantage um the better off you can be i think that that can provide some adrenaline and as long as you can control that adrenaline and, and use it to your advantage i think it can definitely be a good thing for you right right Nice, nice. Dropping some knowledge on us, Brett. Um, talking a little bit more about the punting stuff. Um, obviously, different in so many different ways, not only in technique because they're different strokes, um, but as a mental approach to the punting part of things, is that something that you change when you go out to punt compared to a field goal? Um, it's not really so much. Um, I guess the the approach I've kind of t- taken from it is I'm I'm trying to hit a perfect ball every time, whether it be kicking or punting. Um, so to, to change my approach just because, uh, the swing's different, the technique is different and, um, and all of that, which is, which is obvious. But, um, I think that, I think that the mindset is pretty much, uh, the same for both of them, just for the fact that, I mean, you want a perfect result every time. And, uh, I guess kicking and punting more so kicking, I guess, is, is based on pass fail, whether you make it or not. And, you know whether you hit a good punt or not. That's you're just trying to go out there and and uh, and be as perfect as you can every time. So that's the mindset that I try and take into it. I don't try and change it too much. I think that would that would maybe do more harm than good. But yeah, it's it's pretty much the same mindset and just trying to trying to go out there and hit a good ball and don't really let anything that you can't control uh, affect you. Right. Right. For our listeners out there, Brett, is there a certain drill that you say, look, for my punting technique, i got to do this? Is it drops? Is it like one steps? I mean, is there something that you say, like, this is my go-to if I really want to, you know, get into my rhythm? Yeah, it's it's absolutely drops. Um, there's, I don't know uh, if that's if it's different for other people or not, but I know um, if I go through a little funk or something, I find a line, get on a line, and just do drops and drops and drops and uh until I don't feel like doing any more and then then do some more. Um, and I know I do um, at least 100 um, every day before I go to bed, and um, I think that that's kind of helped me uh, kind of stay stay controlled and stay stay confident and consistent in, uh, in the punting aspect. And you know, if you can have a good drop, then you can hit a good ball, and as long as you're hitting good balls, then uh, – then the weather doesn't really doesn't really affect you too much, and you're not really worried about the situation that it is. You just you know when you go out there that um, the ball is going to feel good coming out of your hand, and that you're gonna you're gonna make good contact on it. Right, right. All right, yeah, nice breaking it down for us, right? Um, and, and even going in a little deeper here, is there uh, Nebraska? Do you guys spend time? Do you watch film? Do you watch yourself kick? And if so, how much do you guys, or how often do you do something like that? Uh, yeah, we have every every kick that we take, besides like um, stuff on our own. Um, but every every team rep we take is filmed, um, and we watch those every day during practice or after practice um and i think it's very beneficial to kind of especially when you we when you can find tendencies um in yourself uh to to kind of figure out how to correct them and 